Hello and welcome to episode six. In this episode, we are going to work on masking around trees, which can be a real challenge. So to get started, we're gonna open up our images. This is our uh, tree shot right here. You can see the sky's really white and quite boring. Um, so we're gonna open up this one. And the next thing we wanna do is open up our sky. So we're gonna go with this sky and open that one. So that's the sky we're gonna use. Now, one of the tricks to doing this is making sure that you kind of start off with a sky that feels similar in brightness. It'll make it a little bit easier to blend the two images and then you can go about processing it once it's blended. But um, the first thing is actually just to get the selection right. So to do that, we are going to use um, a different selection technique than we have before, which is color range. So we're gonna go ahead and pick color range and start off with selecting the midtones. And I have, uh, the reason you see this red here is because I've actually got my preview selection to show quick, quick mask, which just allows me to sort of see what I'm selecting pretty easily. So I'm gonna start off with our midtones. We're not gonna make any uh, edits or changes to this. We're just gonna hit okay. And now we have our marching ants and we wanna go ahead and select save selection. And we're gonna call this midtones. Hit okay. Now what that's doing is saving the selection to the channels panel, which we'll go look at in just a second. Now we can deselect um, this, get rid of these marching ants by choosing deselect. And this time we're gonna go back in and select color range again. And only this time we're gonna do shadows. And what you're gonna see is that now the red has gone to the darker areas. So basically first we selected along the top line where it definitely sticks out between the highlights and midtones, and now we're selecting everything else, leaving the highlights for the moment unselected. So we're gonna go ahead and say, okay. We get the marching ants again, and we want to come back in and save this selection as shadows. Now, basically, and we can um, also hit uh, deselect again, just get rid of the marching ants. So what we've basically done at this point is selected everything but our highlights. And that includes some highlights here in the flowers and the shirts and the hair, but we're gonna address that in a second. But we've basically selected every pixel that isn't a highlight. So to see that, we're gonna go to our channels panel over here under our histogram. We were in layers, and now we're gonna go to channels. And here you'll see that we have um, red, green, blue, and then red, green, and blue. And then we have the two channels that we created. So we have our mid-tones, and then we have our shadows. So what you want to do here is, and, and I just find it easier to select um, the higher line in this case, which is the midtones. And once that's selected and kind of turned on, you go ahead and hold down the command or control key and click on the shadows. And what you'll see is we've got marching ants. And basically what we've done is loaded the selection of shadows into our midtone selection. So our next step is to say, edit, fill and we're going to fill with white and then we hit okay and you'll see now that our uh, mask has changed right it's actually got a whole lot more in it than it did when we had just the midtones selected so our next step here is to deselect so that marching ants go away and we're going to just go ahead and um, get rid of the shadows layer because we no longer need it and that way there's less confusion so all we have now are is the selection for midtones. But as you can see, the black area is what is not selected. And so we have some areas here on the people. Um, this gray on the grass indicates that it's not selected. And also the flowers, which were really bright, have also not been selected. So first thing we're gonna do is inverse the selection. So we're gonna um, use Control I to inverse the mask. And then the next thing we're gonna do is choose our brush, make sure our brush Blend mode is normal, and, um, and our foreground is black. And we're gonna go ahead and just paint in all this area that we don't want selected. So we don't, uh, we want these highlights to all be sort of included. We don't want them to show through when the sky comes in. So we need to black them out now. Now, the reason I'm not going all the way up to the top of the trees is because I'm gonna do that using a brush, a different uh, blend mode on the brush. 
And so we've got that all cleaned up. So now we're gonna go ahead and select a different blend mode. We're gonna go to overlay. And what uh, choosing overlay does is allow us to um, paint over areas that are black and have them fill in with black, but hit areas that are white and have them only fill in with white. Whereas normal mode uh, actually lays down a layer of uh, paint. And so that's not how we wanna do that because we would be overwriting the content. So here you can see how these uh, gray, these black areas with gray in them turn all black. So we get this all done. And then we can just double check to see if we have any gray areas. This looks like it might have a little bit of gray. So if we make our foreground color white now, we can actually just kind of clear up any areas in the white that might be gray. So and see that one wasn't, I didn't do enough with the black. So I've actually made it gray. So here we need to cover it back out. All right, so now that we've done that, our mask is ready and we can um, go ahead, go back and choose uh, layers. Undoing the, that, there we go. Okay, so what we need to do is unclick the eye there. So now we look, it looks normal again for us. And now um, what we wanna do is load our selection. So we've created our mask, but we haven't really applied it to anything yet. So now we need to go to select, load selection, and then from our drop down menu under channel, we can pick midtones and hit okay and now we have the marching ants again. We make our foreground color white, and then we can go ahead and add the mask. Now, in this case, it's actually brought in the um, mask backwards, so we've actually hidden every all the content, only left the sky. So we're gonna go ahead and inverse that again. So there we go. Now we have our trees and our sky as a transparency, which is exactly what we want. And the neat thing about this um, sele selection technique is it actually picks up these areas like uh, right here where it's through the trees, which is exactly what we're trying to do. And it's one of the harder things to accomplish with masks. So now we wanna go back to our sky image and we wanna choose the move tool or the V key. So if you hit the V key, you get this mouse here with the arrows. We're gonna left click and hold and we're gonna drag over to the other tab and then we're gonna bring our mouse back into the image and just unclick and that will drop our sky in. And now we can just move our sky around until we get sort of where we wanna be. Now that we've done that, we wanna grab our layer with the sunflowers and drag it on top of the sky so that the mask only lets the sky through. So, so far we can see that we've done a pretty good job. Now, instead of a plain boring white sky, we have some blue in here. You can see that there's some cloud structure. The trees aren't quite there though. So what we wanna do next is use a layer style. Now this is similar to what we did in episode five, where we used a layer style to enhance Rob's hair. Well, in this case, we're gonna use a, diff a slightly different layer style, but we're gonna go to the same place and use a different feature to enhance the leaves on the sky. So here we're going to go ahead and grab the layer styles by double clicking just to the right of the mask. And we're in, now we're into the um, layer style panels. And we're gonna choose inner glow for this one. So normally this will come up probably for you and I'm just gonna reset it so you can see what we need to do to black. Um, and, it, and as you can tell, there's now a real dark line around the edge of these trees. And that's not exactly the look we're going for. But let's get our uh, menu set, uh, our selection set up. So we want our blend mode to be multiply. We're gonna set the opacity between 75 and 80. And then we want zero for noise. Now to correct the fact that there's this really dark line with black, we wanna double click on the color picker and then hover over a color that's close to what our sky looks like. So in this case, most of the leaves are sitting against this pale blue. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. You'll see that our color picker goes to a pale blue and now we can hit OK. So we want choke at zero. We want size around four or five pixels. And I think that's about right. And so now we can hit OK. Now if we turn off and on the shadow, what you'll see is, or excuse me, the inner glow, what you see is that the leaves stand out just a bit better um, against the skyline. Now the next thing that we can do to just enhance this a little bit further is just take the uh, mask, choose its properties and create a bit of a feather. Not a whole bunch, just a little bit so that they don't, it, the line doesn't feel as harsh on the edge. 
And how we did that is I went ahead and I selected the mask and then I chose the properties which I have here docked in my toolbar. If you don't have it docked, that's not a problem. Just come to window and then choose properties and the properties panel will appear and you can either dock it or just close it off when you're done with it. So now you can see that we're at a point where we can start processing this image um, as a final image. You know, we have the sky built in. It looks pretty good against the, the leaves. Here's like an area where we've got this disconnected leaf. If you find that that happens, that's not a problem. All you need to do is pick up your brush and then with black, because we want to hide that leaf, you can just come in and paint it paint on the mask. Oops, didn't work because I still had it in overlay. So we actually need to come back up, make our brush blend mode normal again. And then we can just paint away these little random leaves that don't belong there, just like that. So you can kind of touch it up as you need to. Now this technique is a bit challenging to use and it doesn't necessarily work all the time. So you have to maybe apply it once, maybe two or three times to any given image uh, just to get a feel um, get it to look like you want it to look. But it's a pretty good uh, job and there's almost no other way to make this selection. Now we could have considered going and choosing highlights, but um, that doesn't actually work as well. And I also wanna give a shout out to Glenn Dewis who has uh, gone about figuring out which is the best way to approach this, this type of masking. And so this is a technique that I learned from him and I just wanted to share with you because I think we find ourselves in this situation more often than not. So you have to play with it a little bit, but it's a pretty good technique. Now, if you wanted to go about processing this image, you could select both these layers, right click, convert to smart object, which we've done with other uh, images. And now we can come in here and uh, non-destructively begin to process the image. So for example, picking camera raw, uh, maybe darkening up the sky a little bit. Maybe something like that. Adding a little bit of contrast, a little bit of clarity to get some shape into the clouds. Maybe creating a, uh, a new graduated filter, only this time we'll go from the bottom up. Adding a bit of clarity down here some contrast into the image, maybe a little bit of saturation. And I think maybe on the sky, what we'd wanna do is also have a little bit of uh, noise reduction. So all I did is I clicked on the um, starting part of the pin again, and uh, that highlights it in green, which means it's active, and I can come down here and just slide our noise reduction uh, to the right a little bit there. So. There's a bunch of other things that I could do with the image, but this is a good start just to give you a feel for how you could blend uh, a sky behind uh, trees with leaves and then get a single image to work with. If you found as you were working that this mask uh, needed some additional adjustment, you could come over to your layers panel and double click the smart object. This takes you back to your original image with uh, your sunflowers and mask as well as with your sky. Now you could do some more manipulation on the mask. When you're done, you just hit the X to close it and then choose save and you'll be back into your uh, image where we've done the camera wall work. So I hope you find that helpful. I will stress that it takes a lot of practice, so don't get, you know, don't get disheartened too quickly on it. It takes a couple of tries to actually make this work correctly. Um, and it just also depends on the image, but it is a, it's a lot better than you might get with other techniques um, when trying to blend sky behind leaves. So uh, happy editing, and I'll see you in episode seven.